I recently marked one year of continuous online ministry and to celebrate, I made two of my favorite foods, chocolate avocado pudding, as well as gluten-free 90% dark chocolate chip banana bread. It was delicious. I even gave some to my mother and she said, my banana bread is good, but yours is even better. So I got a thumbs up from my mother and that for me is sure sign of sure confirming sign that I'm on the right track when it comes to cooking. Now I got to get myself on the right track when it comes to becoming a saint. And as simple as it was to follow both these recipes, the goal in life is not to keep our stomachs full, although that is very enjoyable, but more importantly, it is to keep our souls well nourished, nurtured and growing on the pathway to holiness, to become a saint. And as we follow recipes, when we set out to make some of our favorite foods or foods that others may enjoy uh, sharing, we follow a recipe. And so I want to share with you today the recipe that I try to follow, the ingredients that I try to incorporate into the recipe that, by the grace of God and my cooperation with him, will enable me to grow day by day, one day at a time, one step at a time, on the path to holiness. For those of you who follow me online, what I'm about to say will come to as no surprise to you that I try to do uh, three things. <laughs> there are usually always uh, three things in my talks, but I try to do uh, three things before stepping out, whether it is to cook, to follow a recipe, or to follow a recipe as part of my spiritual growth. And the first thing that I do is that I seek wisdom from others. I ask for help. Following a recipe is akin to asking for help. What have other cooks done? What have they discovered? Some of their tricks, some of their practices, and I want to put those into practice in my own life. But in the spiritual life, we see a parallel in following the, the doctors of the church, their writings, their teachings, what have the saints have to say to us? How do they live their life? Is there part of their life that I can imitate? And so I ask for help, I follow a recipe. And the second thing that I do is that I begin either when I'm cooking or when I'm seeking to grow in the spiritual life with a time of prayer. My favorite prayer is the serenity prayer. It helps keep me rooted in the reality of who I am and my ongoing need for God's grace in my life. And finally, I always use fresh, healthy ingredients. I want to be healthy physically. I also want to be healthy spiritually. So am I feeding off of good, uh, healthy, nutritious components of my diet, in my spiritual life? I want to be available to the Lord. Why do I want to be healthy? So I can be available to the Lord. So that's kind of the the foundation, as it were, the introduction to the recipe that I follow. So as we would in making gluten-free dark chocolate chip banana bread, <laughs> so we do in the spiritual life, we just take ourselves a big bowl. And in that bowl, we are going to, first of all, uh, mix two and a half cups of the stuff of ordinary life or two and a half cups of our daily duties. This is to use some imagery from cooking. This is the chopping, the dicing, the peeling, uh, the cutting. It's not the glamorous stuff uh, that we are necessarily going to focus upon or the glamorous stuff is going to be noticed, but it's the behind the scenes daily grind, day in, day out, ordinary things of life that are necessary when cooking. So no one's ever said to me when they try my gluten-free dark chocolate chip banana bread, <laughs> they ever say, oh, Alan, I just love the way you've like mashed the bananas together. You know, it's just so smooth. No, they don't say that at all. They're just enjoying the finished product, but it's all the hard work that goes into making that uh, beautiful <laughs> banana bread so in the spiritual life is just the ordinary things of life the day in the duties that we have around the house 
uh, doing those, being faithful to those that are key ingredients in the recipe to growing in holiness. We also add to this uh, two cups of a pleasant attitude. Cooking is to be an act of love. It's the way that we show appreciation for the others. It's the way that we show appreciation and joy in their company. We enjoy sharing food with them. We want to be pleasant uh, in life, you know, adding some sweetener to life, uh, a smile, a uh, compliment, uh, hello to a stranger. Someone asks for directions, give them directions, etc. Uh, my favorite go-to sweetener when I'm cooking is 90% dark chocolate. Um, I just I love it. <laughs> it's, it's good for you as well. So add some, some pleasant attitude into the recipe of, of holiness. And also six tablespoons of generosity. God loves a generous a giver. Food is a great way to open up to new relationships. It's also a great way to restore some relationships that have perhaps been strained or broken. Think of the number of times in the gospel where Jesus, after being reconciled with a wayward sinner, shares a meal with them. So it's this generosity of spirit, uh, big heartedness that we want to uh, practice uh, by the grace of God so that we can grow in holiness. I am the oldest of six children, and I knew that any time my mother went to the hospital to give birth to one of my new siblings, well, me and the other siblings who were born and my father were going to really enjoy some good food because relatives and friends and neighbors and in-laws and outlaws... <laughs> They would just bring the food over to the house and we were the beneficiaries of the generosity being able to actually experience and enjoy some food that we would not normally uh, get uh, any other time uh, of the year. So anyway, the important thing is we take those three key ingredients in a big bowl and we kind of mix them uh, together. And on top of that, we then melt in uh, four cups of the bread of life, the Eucharist. Now, I'm not speaking literally here. I'm using figurative language, the kind of cooking uh, imagery to tie it into the recipe for holiness. But melt in four cups of the bread of life. We cook to feed our bodies. And as I said, we do so in a healthy way to be available to God. But Jesus also feeds us with himself, his own body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. And it's very unfortunate that many Catholics will say, well, you know, I don't go to church anymore because I don't get anything out of it. I might call that the number one Catholic eating disorder. Jesus is offering you the food of his word. Jesus is also offering you the food of himself in the Eucharist that we need. And we know how to keep our stomachs full. Well, same with our souls. We need to nurture ourselves on the bread of life, Jesus, who gives himself to us food for the journey, the strength that we need to know and do his will each and every day. Then we melt in one and a half cups of the rosary. Get our Blessed Mother on the case, ask her to help you, whether it be in the spiritual life or whether it be uh, in the life of uh, cooking, all geared, of course, towards uh, growth in holiness or Blessed Mother. As one who accompanies us, the rosary is a measured, it's a numerical a prayer. Don't add, don't subtract, and just follow the recipe, follow the method that others have devised for us, that others have benefited from over the generations. You know, maybe you have a recipe that has been handed down from generation to generation in our families. Well, the rosary is handed down to us from generation to to generation as an effective tool, an instrument in meditating on the life, the times of, of Jesus with our Blessed Mother uh, growing in holiness. And lastly, we then melt in eight tablespoons of Eucharistic adoration. We want to spend time with Jesus. We want to be inspired by inspiration, capital I, who is Jesus himself. And in our times of adoration, we come before the Lord in all honesty, seeking his wisdom and his guidance. 
Lord, what would you have me do? Lord, how would you have me serve today? Asking the Lord those questions. But the Lord will also inspire us in different ways. And to be brutally honest with you, sometimes when I'm in adoration, I'm actually thinking about what I'm going to have for lunch <laughs> or what I'm going to have cook for cook for supper. It is what it is, right? So if that inspiration comes, okay, Lord, thank you very much. I'll just put that over here uh, for now. Uh, get back to that when the time comes. But in the meantime, Lord, I just want to bake here in your presence. And that brings me uh, to the concluding point. Have some coffee here. Very simple recipe to follow. Make coffee, drink it. Um, take the dry stuff, take the melted stuff, Put it all together, pour it in a pan, and bake it. <laughs> bake it. Bake it in the purifying fire of the sacrament of confession. Confession is like taking inventory. We go uh, to the pantry. What's in the pantry? What the, is there that is uh, beyond its best before date? Going into the fridge, what are the ingredients there that I can still uh, use? What do I keep to make something nutritious, something healthy, something to nurture me physically? Again, using the imagery of, of cooking, putting it all uh, together and baking it in the merciful love of Jesus who waits for us there in the sacrament availing us of the help that we need to grow in holiness. And what does this give us? What does this recipe, as it were, in the spiritual life produce for us? It produces for us growth in the virtue of hope. Hope is this confident expectation in what God has accomplished and his faithfulness. What God has accomplished and his faithfulness. If there's ever, if there was ever, or is ever a time in the world where we need hope, it is today. And hope has a name and his name is Jesus. And so we want to grow. We want to grow in holiness. We want to become saints. This is the recipe that I try to follow. What recipe are you trying to follow? And what recipe Will the Lord Jesus inspire in us if we perhaps have discarded our recipe or perhaps are looking for a recipe? Just ask Jesus that question in prayer and have the confidence that he will inspire us. And so let us pray. So Lord Jesus, we do thank you for the gift of this day. We thank you, Jesus, that we can indeed benefit from your grace your mercy, your power, your peace, Lord. We need more of that in our life, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for the many women and men who have gone before us, saints of the church, Lord. Help us just tap into their wisdom, Lord, the recipe that they have followed, Lord. Help us, Lord Jesus, to keep you at the center of our life. We are grateful, Lord, for your love. Grateful, Lord Jesus, that you have indeed died risen from the dead, conquered sin and death. The gates of heaven, Jesus, are open to us and we accept the gift of eternal life, Jesus, accepting you as the Lord and Savior of our life. Saint Joseph, Mother Mary, our patron saints, please pray for us, especially our families, our friends, co-workers, fellow students, Lord, who are far from you, who are confused, who lack hope, Jesus. Help us to be hopeful in the midst of a world that desperately needs to know you and the freedom that you offer to us, Jesus. Amen. So thank you very much again for tuning in. I really appreciate you being with me every week as we journey together. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, comment, etc etc all that good stuff in the in the meantime let's just ask the lord to bless you may almighty god bless you in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen remember when we're powerless that's when we're strong and victory is indeed gained through surrender 
Stay caffeinated. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye.